Scarlet Knights going with the black uniforms today. And we are set to go from Piscataway. We're underway. Comes to rest at the eight yard line where it's picked up by Brad Starks. And down around the 20. Well, the quarterback for West Virginia out of Miramar High School in Miami. Geno Smith having a pretty good year. 18 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. And he leads the Big East in passing yardage with over 350 per game. Very strong arm. Uh, accurate, throws a deep ball very well, and he can put it away and run if he has to. Urban comes in motion. And the first play, a running play for Dustin Garrison. Scott Fallone and others keep him from no gain there on the first play. Let's take a look at today's Chick-fil-A impact players, and let's start when West Virginia has the football. Yeah, Stedman Bailey is that number one receiver in this high-potent offense. Tavon Austin, he's a flashy guy, can go the distance on any given play, also gets involved in the return game. And then Justin Francis, big number 91, great get-off. It'll be important for him to get good pass rush up the middle today. Austin in the slot on the left side, and here's Smith to throw for the first time. And off the hands of the intended receiver, Ivan McCartney, at the 25-yard line. Kasim Green had the coverage for Rutgers. Ball was thrown a little bit behind McCartney. And now this Mountaineer offense facing a third and nine. Once again, four receivers, two to each side. Garrison in the backfield. Smith. Off the hands of Garrison out of the backfield and incomplete. Great play by Kasim Green, the linebacker. He has man-to-man -man coverage on the back, and he forces that thing to go outside and wide, and then no chance to catch the football. Actually, there was a chance, but... <laughs> got to think that it's a little bit slippery. Michael Molinari, a punter on, and that's Mohamed Sanu standing at his own 43-yard line. Here comes the rush in Rutgers, which has been so good at blocking kicks this year. Almost got that one. Sanu lets it roll. It'll be down at the 41-yard line. So very good starting field position for Rutgers and their true freshman quarterback who's going no sleeves today, like no that. gloves, the Elmwood Park, New Jersey native, Gary Nova. Fourth start, as you said, he's two and one as a starter. Suffered his first loss last week. This is a kid that never lost a game in his high school career. 24-0 and and as a starter. And they said he took it pretty hard. And I can imagine, and not losing for your entire career. That's got to hurt when you finally do. Nova went to Don Bosco Prep, one of the top high schools football programs in the nation. And a false start. There were several. False start. Offense number 15. Five-yard penalty. Touchdown. Wow. You can hear. It's a little windy down there. That wind. Dennis Hennigan, our referee. It started snowing. Changed from rain to snow about 10.30 this morning. Snowed hard, let up a little bit. Now the intensity of the snow has picked up again, and obviously the wind pretty intense there on the field. Wind behind this Rutgers offense right now. Jeremy Deering. No gain. Julian Miller, among others, there for West Virginia. Let's take a look at today's Chick-fil-A impact players. Where the Scarlet Knights have possession. And this offense starts and ends with Mohamed Sanu. 65 receptions already. The offense goes through him. Another guy you got to look at today is the big tight end, D.C. Jefferson. Last week, this West Virginia defense got carved up by Syracuse's tight end. And then on defense, Terrence Garvin, the emotional leader and outside linebacker. Well, strong safety. Same kind of thing for this Mountaineer 3-5 defense. Martinick, the fullback. 
to the 38-yard line. Jawan Snow, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. There's George Wright, the nose tackle, coming out for West Virginia. West Virginia has that three-man front, and they are sneaking people up into the box pre-snap so that you're getting eight, minimum of eight in the box as they expect the run out of this Rutgers offense. Third and long, third and 13. Over three receivers, two to the right side for Nova. Including Sanu in the slot on the right side. Steps up, throws, caught, first down. At the 45-yard line of West Virginia, Karan Pratt. A gain of 18. Only a three-man rush, which means Nova has all kinds of time, and he can step up into the pocket. You look at that, there's six protectors, only three rushers. And that allows him to get that seam up the middle, and Pratt, watch him make a good cut and just get into that hole in the zone defense. Play fake to the running back, Jamison. Nova lets it go, hit as he throws, and incomplete, intended for Mark Harrison. And the pressure it put Mark, it has gotten much more slippery out on this field than it was in pregame warm-ups. We had a little lull in pregame warm-ups, and the field was uh, plowed and blown and all those things, and people were running around pretty good. But now Coach Ciano, who is 0-10 against this Mountaineer team, that field has gotten slipperier, and this could really change the way the ball game. Now West Virginia has won the last 16 in a row against Rutgers. Jeremy Deering forward to near the 40-yard line of West Virginia. A gain of just three. George Wright, the nose tackle, brought him down, along with Darwin Cook. It'll be a third down and about seven. Well, just outside the Mountaineers' 40-yard line. Getting a little harder to see the... The yard line's the yards. there, right? Yeah. <laughs> see the first down marker there as they need to get inside the 35 to the, to the 34 for a first down. Nova, quick drop, steps up, going to run for it and be hit even with a lunge, gets close to the first down. Julian Miller and Najee Good stopped him. The spot's going to leave him about a yard and a half short. Yeah, and I can't imagine trying to kick a field goal in this type of weather from that far out. So they're going to go for it. I think this is a good call. Field position, you, won't, you don't really give up that much. The ball being at the 36-yard line. And this is a good running football team. Fourth and a long yard. Jamison and Martinick in the backfield in the offset eye. Now they shift Jefferson and Urban to the right side of the formation. Martinick in motion. Now, Jamison also came in motion. We're going to have an shift. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. And fourth and one becomes fourth and six. Everybody was moving around there. Yeah, I think now you punt the football. That's what I would do right now. The entire Rutgers team went to the sideline and does look like, yes, the punt unit's coming out. Well, that's a, a bad mistake, and that's on the quarterback, Gary Nova, as far as understanding what's going on with that play clock, and it's running down again. Justin Dorner punted away. Tavon Austin back at his own 11-yard line, calling for a fair catch. Let's it bounce at the six, and they'll down it inside the five. That's another thing with a uh, snow-covered field. That ball will check up. 37-yard punt, no return. Early on from Rutgers, no score in the snow. No score, West Virginia and Rutgers from here in snowy Piscataway, New Jersey. West Virginia, of course, announcing earlier this week their move to the Big 12. It's been a busy span here for the Big East. Syracuse and Pitt accepting invitations to the ACC. TCU, which never actually made it into the conference. Yeah. How about that? Going to the Big 12. Now, West Virginia is saying uh, the Big 12, planning on them being in the conference by next football season, publicly the Big East right now saying that they're going to hold them to their 27th month exit agreement. 
And I guess as we say so often in this country, right, everything is negotiable. Yes, it is. And we're not done with all the, the changes on the landscape either. The Big East is going to have to go out and get some football members, and they're talking about picking up some teams out of Texas. Of Houston, Central SMU, Florida. and Central Florida, possibly as early as next week. Big East officials will meet in Philly early next week. Smith going deep. That ball almost intercepted. It took a very good effort from cornerback Logan Ryan. Threw that ball about 40 yards in the air. Speaking of in the air, West Virginia will, and their fans will have to get used to flying. This is a much manageable drive here from Morgantown, but the closest from Morgantown to the Big 12 is Ames, and that's 870 miles. Uh, you'd have to leave on Monday to make that one on Saturday. Austin right at the goal line nearly went down to a knee, but did not, and advances across the 10, about three yards shy of the first down. Free safety, David Rowe with the tackle. Boy, this is almost a safety. Watch Austin. He's right there. He's going to make this catch. Wow. That knee looked like it was down to me. However, it was down outside of the end zone. And I believe they're going the to look at this. The ruling on the prior play is under further review. The ruling on the field was that the runner's knee was not down when he caught the ball. They need indisputable video evidence to change this. And it's one that they're going to have to take a close look at. All right, here's the catch. That knee right there is down in my book. I think they're going to move this thing back to about the six-inch line. Well, if it is overturned, it will be a third and 13 from inside the one right there. Is that enough to overturn it? You think so? Yeah, I do. I think it is. I don't know, maybe we have to check the mark in the snow <laughs> and, and make a determination there. But I, I thought the knee was definitely on the ground. A referee, Dennis Hennigan, getting the word from replay official Steve McBride. Yeah, that looks like the knee mark right there. Time out and break. The small plows came out and were shoveling around the sidelines again. Yeah, that knee right there. Well, I tried to blow it up. It blew up my face, but that, that thing is down on the ground. There's no question. Well, the playing surface which during warm-ups did not look like an issue rate is yeah. becoming an issue it was the field was perfectly cleared during warm-ups and watching guys run around uh, after further review the receiver's knee was down when he caught the ball the ball we placed at the one yard line third down please reset the game clock to nine minutes 52 seconds yeah exactly as we saw it but as we were saying mark pre-game this field was Plowed, brushed, all those things, and guys weren't having any trouble with footing. Since that time, the snow has come down, and it is tough right there. You need skates. Maybe better than spikes. Third and 13, Mountaineers from inside their own one. They go three receivers to the right. One to the left. Garrison in the backfield. And Smith from the gun. Five yards deep in his own end zone. Hands off. Garrison gets some little bit of room up near the two. Wayne Warren wrapped him up quickly. Good reaction by Warren coming up off the edge. Unblocked, making the hit. And this would be a tough area to punt the football out of as well. They don't have the full distance for the normal snap. And Rutgers almost got the first one. They went after it. Michael Molinari. The back of the end zone. Gets it away. But a short punt. It's into the wind. And great field position. Tough to read the yard markers. What about the 26. 26-27 yeah. yard line.
So Molinari, under those conditions, back of his end zone, hey, fortunate just, to get rid of it. Just getting the punt out and getting off is, is a win in that regard. Coach Holgerson, I don't know what he's got in terms of the running game, but he's going to exhaust that part. In fact, we talked to him. He said 40% of the plays on his sheet are runs. He's going to have to dip, dip into those today. They start at the 28-yard line of West Virginia. Handoff, Juwan Jamison. George Wright, the nose tackle, number 99. On well, the tackle for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers are loading up against the run. They've actually brought an extra middle linebacker into the mix. Expecting run. And this becomes a tough situation for them. That 3-5 defense that they run is built for spread offenses. Well, they're playing a power offense today. Nova under center. Burton goes in motion into the backfield. Jefferson to tie it into the right side. Sanu in motion. Hand off Jamison. Good try to strip him, but he's down after a gain of just one. Let's check in with the studio. Here's Robert Flores. All right, Mark, Taco Bell studio update. Oklahoma, number nine in the country. The BCS standings leading 7-0. That's Blake Bell, not Landry Jones, taking it in. And the Sooners are up on K-State 7. And Texas A&M led 28-17 at the half. They fall at home to Missouri, 38-31 in overtime. Robert, thank you. Well, Texas A&M, their two other losses. Ray, they blew big leads in the second half. Who's in overtime? Yeah, Mike Sherman not going to be happy about that. Nova incomplete at the goal line. Looking for Harrison, who's... Going to make an adjustment, but Pat Miller had him covered. I don't know that you can kick a field goal in this type of, of weather. They're going to give it a try. San Santee's going to come out and give it a try. It'll be about a, I don't know, a 40-yarder. And he's been struggling. He's missed his last four, including two last week at Louisville, and what turned out to be a two-point loss. It's a 40-yard attempt out of the hole to Patrick Kivlahan. Off the right hash. Does it have enough? Yes. And under these conditions, the senior San Santee snaps his personal drought, having missed four straight field goals, and gets Rutgers on the board. Ciano and the Knights take the early lead. College football on ABC brought to you by K Jewelers, the number one jewelry store in America. Every kiss begins with K. The 2012 Ford F-150 with available EcoBoost. Visit Ford.com slash big score to learn more. And Allstate. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. Now what's snow continuing to come down? 717 to go first quarter. 3-0 Rutgers. See Greg Schiano, the head coach of Rutgers there on the left. San Santee, who will turn in just a moment. Yes, there he is. The kicker with the 40-yarder. He missed two last week against Louisville. And after he missed the second, Greg Schiano motioned for T to come off the field. And he had a very brief yet intense, I won't even call it a conversation, because it was one-sided. He got in his grill is what he did. He said, you know, it's not about missing or not making the play. He can deal with that. What he didn't like was the body language afterwards, the, the woe is me, the head hanging that T did. And he said, we don't act like that around here. That Tavon was his problem. Tavon Austin back. Justin Derner to kick it away. Brad Starks also back with Austin. Taken by Starks around the three. Well, last week, West Virginia ambushed in the Carrier Dome. Nick Provo, the tight end for Syracuse, had not one, not two, but three touchdowns. They beat West last week. San Santee missed two field goals. And we asked Greg Ciano about this directly when we were in his office yesterday. What did you say to San Santee? And just what you mentioned, Ray. It wasn't about missing the kicks. 
It's about the body language, handling yourself. Although I'm sure he wasn't happy about missing the kick either. Ball on the 26-yard line as West Virginia has their third possession. Handoff, Dustin Garrison running right. Plows through for a gain of about seven. Kevin Snyder, the linebacker, finally brought him down. A little offset pistol, a lead play or an ISO play, and good running by this West Virginia offense. And they're going to have to do some of that today, run and then maybe hit some play action. But when they have two backs in the backfield, they are going to run the football and then hit play action off of that. Garrison and Alston are the two backs. Smith dumps it off, and it's caught. Taken for a first down. Garrison out of the backfield. Runs all the way up near midfield. Deron Harmon, the strong safety, able to get him out of bounds, but not before he gained a 15. All right, check this. This rush is going to get upfield right here, and that's going to create the room for the screen pass. See the little seam right there? It develops. Good block on the edge, pin in the edge. Nice pickup by this West Virginia offense. Puts it right in the gut of Alston. Turns the corner. Breaks free. Still on his feet. Sean Alston into the end zone. Mountaineers touchdown. A 52-yard run. Well, Alston is a guy with a bit more size in that backfield for the Mountaineers. 221 pounds, and he rambled all the way to the house. And that's what I'm talking about, advantage offense in these kind of conditions. Normally on a play like that, you're not going to get it out the back end. But however, you give West Virginia a lot of credit. They blocked it very well, but the linebacker wasn't able to scrape. And when you block the man on the end of the line of scrimmage and seal him and a linebacker can't scrape, that's what happens. Tyler Bitten Kurt for the point after, and he knocks it through. That 52-yard run by Sean Alston. That's the longest rush of the year for West Virginia. Good block by Stedman Bailey down the field. Turns into a foot race. And Alston's going to win that one all the way to the house. This was just prior to kickoff. Eric Legrand helping lead the Rutgers Scarlet Knights onto the field. Eric, who suffered a career-ending spinal cord injury just over a year ago, October 16, 2010, in the Rutgers game in the Meadowlands against Army. He's from nearby Avenal, New Jersey, Colonia High School. He had been a running back, linebacker in high school, and with 275 pounds, eventually moved to the defensive line for Greg Schiano. Yeah, and that's something that Greg Schiano loves to do, is move guys down, is what he calls it. And that means you move uh, defensive backs down the linebacker. You, you move linebackers down to the defensive line, put a little weight on them, and it increases the speed of your football team. Jeremy Daring and Jordan Thomas back to receive the Corey Smith kickoff. Up near the 14-yard line. Jordan Thomas pushed down. Up across the 30. Well, with just four races left, Carl Edwards looks to overcome his Martinsville drought and maintain his points lead, while Kevin Harvick tries to rebound with a second straight win at the tiny half mile. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Martinsville. Coverage begins on ESPN tomorrow at 1 Eastern. Not the best driving conditions around yeah. Piscataway, New Jersey, thanks to the Nor'easter and, frankly, around the whole Northeast this weekend. Freshman quarterback Gary Nova looks to throw on first down across the middle for the tight end Jefferson. Incomplete, and then he took a pretty good pop at the 45-yard line by Najee Good. And this is based on the film from last week. You just get your tight end and run him right up the seam. And the linebackers for West Virginia have not proven yet that they can cover a tight end. Yeah. And that time he was open to throw just a little high from Nova. Rutgers at their own 40-yard line, second down at 10. Nova 
pass incomplete. That was behind Sanu. It brings up a third and ten. Nova had to get rid of this before he wanted to. There was a blitz from West Virginia that did not get picked up. He had somebody in his face right away and had to throw it before Sanu was even out of his cut. Sanu's going to line up wide left. Nova 0 for his last four pass attempts. Bartnick into the backfield with him. Here comes the rush. Throws to the sideline incomplete at midfield. Keith Tandy able to break it up, intended for Tim Wright. This is great coverage by Tandy as he's on the spot and knocks it away. First of all, a good job picking up the blitz. You see Martinick come across and pick up the free runner, and that gives Nova the time, but Tandy almost undercut that one and took it the other way. Well, Tandy has a couple of interceptions this year, almost got one there. Austin back to receive the punt. Let's it bounce at the 25, and it's going to come to a stop around the 22-yard line. Let's check in again with the studio. Here's Robert Flores. All right, Mark, Oklahoma State has scored 14 points in the last 18 seconds after Baylor turned it over. Brandon Whedon to Kai Staley. It's 14-0 Cowboys in Stillwater. Their bitter rival, Oklahoma, leading Kansas State 14-3. That game on ESPN or ESPN3. Mark. Robert, thanks. The court said Oklahoma State offense last year, Ray, was led by Dana Holgerson as the offensive coordinator. Yeah, he made a quick stop, had a cup of coffee there, and brought him up to the number two passing offense in the country. Smith. Like he may be changing the play, but then the play clock gets down near zero, and he has to burn a timeout, so West Virginia uses their first. 5.36 to go in this first quarter. 7-3, Mountaineers on top. Back here in Piscataway, they have shoveled around the boundaries, but not along the yard markers. What you're seeing on the football field is actually through our technology to show you the yard markers. See the numbers. We know where the ball is. The numbers, and, the, and lines. the lines. How about that? Those actually aren't on the field. No, I, I just looked up, but they weren't there. Smith rolling right. Dumps it off out of the hands of Tyler Urban, incomplete. Urban, a former tight end, is now a wide receiver, but they're using him as a tight end in this package. Senior from North Huntington, Pennsylvania, comes out. Guy who was limited last year due to a knee injury. Second down and 10 at the 22 of West Virginia. Andrew Bowie on the backfield for the Mountaineers. This carry. Gets him about three yards. Scott Malone, the defensive tackle, makes the tackle. Hello, number 94, junior Central Iceland, New York. Crowd trying to get into this third down situation. Another two back formation from West Virginia. West Virginia all two on third down so far. Looks like an all-out blitz coming, they do. Smith lost the football. And it looks like Rutgers jumps on top of it. Manny Abreu, number 51, with the fumble recovery for Rutgers. And it looked like... Yeah, nobody just touched it. it. Nobody touched Geno Smith. He was do, trying to do a little pump fake and lost the football. Here he is, no gloves on. You see he's trying to wind up a little bit, and it just comes out of his hands. And then I looked like one of his linemen, looked like Don Barclay's the one who kicked it inadvertently. Well, unforced error, but it turns into the 26th takeaway of the season for Rutgers. That leads the FBS. Nova hands it off. Savon Huggins pushed back. 
We get a look at Savon Huggins, the six foot, 200 pound true freshman from Jackson, New Jersey. One of the top recruits for the Scarlet Knights. Here's the flag, false start against the Knights. I think it's an illegal formation. Yeah. Offense, five players in the backfield, five-yard penalty, second down. Indeed it is. Didn't have enough on the line of scrimmage, apparently. And usually that happens to one of you when you're one of your first down. offensive tackles line up a little too deep. So first and 15 from the 16-yard line of West. Jawan Jamison. Now the back. Offset eye with the Tight end DC Jefferson in the backfield. Hand off. Jamison straight ahead. Picks up about two. Jamison on the carry. Out near the 15 yard line. This West Virginia defense is playing very well here early on. And, you know, we talked to their defensive coordinator, Jeff Castile, and he said he flat out challenged his guys. He felt like they didn't have enough effort or intensity last week. So he challenged them, challenged their manhood, and said he hoped that they would respond. And thus far here early on, they're playing pretty tough on defense. Second from the 14-yard line of West Virginia. Nova towards the end zone, almost intercepted. If Gary Nova waits just a tick, this thing's going to come open. As it was, he threw it nearly into the hands of Darwin Cook. See how he's got an, an opportunity. See how that, if he just lets that thing go a little bit more, I believe his receiver would clear that. Nearly the second interception of the year for Darwin Cook. There is a Mountaineer player down. Can't quite see the number, but offensive lineman. Or excuse me, defensive lineman by the size of him. And that's Josh Taylor. Fifth-year senior. Taylor, who's from Florida as well. In fact, he was a high school teammate of West Virginia quarterback Geno Smith. Take a look at the BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos, the top two teams idle this week. In fact, three of the top four with Boise State also idle. Oklahoma State leading their game over Baylor. Big game, Clemson and Georgia Tech, and then Andrew Luck and Stanford in L.A. to take on USC. And you have to imagine LSU and Alabama will be number one, going, one and two going into next week's showdown. Arkansas came back to beat Vandy. And Josh Taylor, for his own power, but hobbling as he walks towards the West Virginia sideline. Good sign to see the big fella up. 3.38 to go in this first quarter from Piscataway. A San Santee 40-yard field goal gave Rutgers a 3-0 lead, but Sean Alston's 52-yard touchdown run He's made it 7-3 Mountaineers. Rutgers 1-4 of on third down so far today. Nova. Cash, Sanu stayed on his feet, heads to the end zone, touchdown! Well, Sanu took a bump from Keith Tandy, but kept his balance and marched right into the end zone for a Rutgers TD. And it's an epidemic across this country. Guys are not wrapping up on tackles. And Tandy is the latest victim of it. He came in, he made a nice hit. He was right there, but he failed to wrap up Sanu. Sanu 6'2", 215, and very strong lower body. You're not going to knock him off his feet with just a hit. you got to wrap him up. Point after for San San T. Nothing a given under these conditions, but he knocks it through. A 14-yard touchdown catch for Mohamed Sanu. Sanu is going to come in from the right side of the screen. A little underneath route. Tandy right there, makes a good hit. Does not wrap up. 
and there's nobody left because they were in man-to-man -man coverage and nobody is able to find Sanu and Nova excited about that touchdown pass seventh touchdown catch of the season for Mohamed Sanu and the eighth touchdown pass for Gary Nova Mohamed Sanu such a vital part not only of the Rutgers offense but also on special teams last year played quarterback in the Wildcat four passing touchdowns in his career nine rushing and he just picked up his 12th career touchdown catch and they slid him out of the Belitnikov list this week overdue finally how they had his name omitted yeah. all this time is ridiculous fourth leading receiver in the country and finally got a little love for it that's the kind of play Sanu can give you and I'm sure down there you're getting a, a little lecture about wrapping up when you tackle because they, they had that play. Tandy had that play stopped. He was right where he was supposed to be. Buff. Austin and Starks back deep. Justin Derner, though, got to put the ball back on the tee. Make a tee out of snow here if you wanted to. <laughs> No continuing to fall here at Piscataway. Now Justin Dorner ready. That is Austin standing in his own 12. Starks will see it skip into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Sanu with a touchdown catch today. He had a record-setting game. This was the third week of the season against all 24th. A Big East record, 16 catches. That's a pretty good afternoon. See a couple of touchdowns. And the thing about Sanu is he is a physical receiver. He will break tackles. He will punish tacklers. So now a 10-7 Rutgers lead as West Virginia begins at their own 20. Weston Garrison in the backfield. Now he goes in motion. They fake, they pass to him. Little flip and Austin turns the corner down the sideline. Tavon Austin, 80 yards and West Virginia quickly responds to reclaim the lead. West Virginia getting it done on the ground so far today. A little razzle dazzle there, and usually that kind of reverse, when the, the the reverse actually happens, either right at the midline or even behind that, the defense will have enough time to go get it. Be because it's so slippery out there today, guys can't change directions and then hit full speed. And Austin was at full speed when he got the football. Advantage offense. Tyler Bitt and Kurt for the point after. Out of the hold of Michael Molinari. Straight through. 14-10 West Virginia. It's kind of the fly sweep. They made a little pitch to him, Lorraine. Yeah, you're going to see it right there. He just takes it. Now good block downfield. Right there by Alston, the fullback, the running back comes out. He just gets a body on the safety, and that's all you need. Here he is right here, just going to come, take the, the, the pitch. Little fake there, fake bubble screen, the pitch on the back side. Good block right there. The timing of it was what sprung Austin. And he finds that nice little shoveled area yeah, along the sideline. He? <laughs> he went right for that. Said, I'm not going to slip over here. Third touchdown of the season for Tavon Austin, junior from Baltimore. Nice play call. Taking advantage of the slick field. The change of direction today is really going to be tough on defenses. So you can see kicking off from the 30 as we superimpose. The numbers onto your screen because those are not shoveled onto the field here at High Point Solution Stadium. 
Corey Smith to kick it away for the Mountaineers. We've already had three lead changes in this game, just in the last a little under three minutes. The up back for Rutgers. Edmund Lorea returning. Twelfth career touchdown for Austin. Uh, Rutgers, they scored on their last possession after Smith turned it over. Just fumbled the football without contact. And Nova almost had it picked off. All right, that should have been picked off. Darwin Cook had an opportunity to pick it. But then Sanu bounced off Tandy and rolled into the end zone. That was the last possession for Gary Nova and Rutgers. They begin this one at their own 39-yard line. Martinick into the backfield. Sanu left side of the formation. Play fake. Nice catch by Martinick with the reach back for it and is ushered out at the 48-yard line by Keith Tandy, who that time did wrap up the Rutgers ball carrier. Yeah, Martinick lining up in the fullback spot. He's going to slip through on a play action. Nice reach back and grab right there. And they try to use the stiff arm and misses. And look at Tandy tackle that time. He wrapped him right up. Gain of nine, sets up second and short. True freshman Gary Nova. Lost last week for the first time ever as a starting quarterback, going all the way back to his high school days at Don Bosco when he was 24-0 as a starter. Jawan Jamison has the first down into West Virginia territory to the 45, a gain of seven. Darwin Cook with the tackle. Real nice job of that right side of the offensive line creating the hole. Art Force and Caleb Johnson and Coach Giano. That's his kind of football right there. Run it between the tackles and knock people out of the way. First down, Knights from the 45 of the Mountaineers. Sanu shifts over to the left side of the formation. Martinick in motion into the backfield. Nova, play fake, looking right. Another pass behind Martinick, this time unable to pull it in. I've noticed this a little bit in watching Gary Nova on film. Some of the shorter passes he becomes inaccurate on because he's too careful. He's, it's almost like he's aiming the football instead of just letting it rip. And his motion gets shorter. And that leads to accuracy problems. Watch his motion on this one. See how short that was? Did a little hitch fake, and then he, he didn't really put the full wind up, the full throw into it. He tried to throw a dart almost. Second down at 10 for the 45 of West Virginia. Play fake again. Nova steps up, throws deep down the near sideline. Touchdown, Mark Harrison. 45-yard touchdown catch. Well, it was Keith Tandy on the coverage. And Harrison, who had a difficult drop late in the game last week at Louisville, hanging on to that one for a Rutgers score. And Gary Nova has a sixth sense because he had a blindside rusher coming in the middle of his back and instinctively he stepped up into the pocket to buy enough time to deliver that one. Second touchdown catch of the year for Mark Harrison. Point after attempt for San San T. And he snuck it in. Got it through near that left upright. And that's where he's been missing the kicks, is pulling him to the left. He almost missed that extra point. Well, this was close to hitting that left upright, but let's look at the... Watch the pass rush coming off the backside, and Nova is, just feels it instinctively. See how he saw it at the end? Steps up in the pocket and delivers the perfect strike down the field to Harrison. That was Najee Good who had the pressure on Nova from that blind side. I'm telling you, I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more points ring up on this board. 31 already here in the first quarter. And offense just has an advantage. The footing is not good. Hundred and eleven total yards for Rutgers, 142 total yards for West Virginia. So far through this 
first quarter. We've had four lead changes already in this game, and still a minute 41 to go in the first quarter. And them tubas filling up with snow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the rush yards. Kind of reversed on what we would expect here, right? You know, West Virginia, the passing team, leading 130 rushing yards. And it's Rutgers getting it done through the air. Yeah, with a couple of touchdowns through the air. Devon Brown back for West Virginia. Well, the worst thing is when your feet get wet, because that's when they get cold. Still on his feet, coming to the near side. He's got a blocker with him. Down the sideline. Starks for the pylon. He's going to be marked out inside the 10. It was the kicker, Justin Derner. We got close enough to him to get him out of bounds, but what a return for Starks of 80 yards. And watch Stark. Well, he will check out and see where he steps out. A flag has come out right there. It looks like that's so close, but the official was right on it, and he blew it. But it's coming back. A flag is down, and it's going to go against West Virginia. Boy, that thing's coming all the way back. So this will erase the 80-yard return for Starks. Notice on that return, Starks never really made a cut. He just ran straight ahead. And the defense, the special teams, the coverage team had to make the cuts. And when they make the cuts, you just can't accelerate out of a cut. Here he is, watch. He's no cuts here. He kind of leans in a little bit like he's going to make that cut, but he keeps it straight ahead going right through here. And here's your hold right here. Got their arm wrapped around the back. Now they're going to call that. So it certainly was a key reason that he was able to break that. So it comes back. First and 10, West Virginia from their 17. Andrew Bowie with the carry. Gains about five. That time they had three guys in the backfield, did West Virginia. Coach Holgerson said he had 40% runs on his call sheet. He's got, a, I think he's up to using about 22% of them right now. <laughs> he's going to get all the way up to 40 before it's over. Three receivers to the left for Geno Smith. Makes the handoff to Garrison. Quick pass is caught by McCartney, and he has the first down. That's a check at the line of scrimmage by the quarterback, the, the junior, Geno Smith. He saw the cushion the corner was given out there. He said, I'll, I'll take a little hitch from you, no problem. West Virginia going hurry up after the gain of seven. First down from their 29. Under a minute to play in this first quarter. Smith puts it in the belly of Gary. But he's met by Steve Buharnis, the linebacker. Gain of only two. Loss of two, that is. And Baharnas just playing out there off the edge. And the backs are at a disadvantage when they have to cut. But when they can run straight ahead and make the defense cut, they gain the advantage. Second and 12 from the 27. Smith, that's caught. Pulled down by Urban. First down. Tyler Urban with the catch. Pickup of 13. See if West Virginia can get another playoff before the time winds down here in the first quarter. And they're not going to get it off. Quarter, that's the quarter. So that's the end of the first quarter. Well, when we come back for quarter number two, we'll be joined by Rutgers' Eric LeGrand. Out of offense on this snowy day, Rutgers leading by three. Eric LeGrand before the game, leading the Rutgers Scarlet Knights onto the field here at High Point Solution Stadium. And honor 
great to have Eric in the booth with us. Terrific to have you with us. Hi, Eric. Hey, it's great to be up here, you know. What was the emotions like when you when you led the team onto the field today? Actually, I didn't think I was going to get that emotional, but then I seen some of my teammates crying, and I was just like, wow, that it almost hit me, but, you know, I sucked <laughs> it up, and I made it off the field out of tears. That was an emotional situation, and it was exciting for me to see you do that with the football team, and glad to have you up here as well. Hey, it's great to be up here just... Now watching this game, it's been a great game going on so far. It is. Now Rutgers with a three-point lead as we begin the second quarter. Geno Smith gets help from a block and then just unloads. Throws it out of bounds. It'll be second down. Did you ever play in this kind of weather, Eric? Not exactly. Like this was this is a crazy blizzard, but I did get to play in the snow game versus West Virginia two years ago. Started off raining, then it just came back to a blizzard out of nowhere. But this is the crazy weather out here that we have today. Well, Rhea, who of course played linebacker in the NFL, was talking about under these conditions, tougher for the defense than the offense. It is tough for the defense because they're sliding all around. The, the offense knows where the ball is going. The defense has to react to it. And it's hard for them to react when they're sliding all around on that field. On second and ten, he's tripped up in the backfield. Garrison, who loses two yards. The tackle there by Justin Francis. Francis has unbelievable get-off. He's a guy that can penetrate and make a play uh, right away. Absolutely. He's coming from Miami. There's a bunch of fast guys down there. There's always have battles with him, racing him in practice. Mountaineers 0 for 3 on third down. This is a third and 13 from their own 38. Smith, crossing route, taken by Starks, turns it upfield, pushed out around the 45. And they'll mark it about the 47, but still a few yards shy of the first down. He gains 10. West Virginia is going to have to bring the punt team out here. Interested to see if Rutgers will bring pressure here. Oh, it looks like they're... Been close to a couple of punts here today already. Yeah, that's... You know, Rutgers loves to block punts. Looks like right now they're in a safe look, though. Yeah, with less than three yards to really go, I think it's probably a safe call to go yeah. safe. Yeah. Sanu at his own 15-yard line. On the punt from Justin Dorner. Sanu lets it bounce. It's rolling towards the end zone, but kept out by the Mountaineers. And an assist by the snow. That ball just won't roll good uh -huh. in the snow. So Rutgers will begin inside their own five. Well, just about a month after Eric's injury, the Believe campaign began. Your number, number 52, of course, your initials Part of the Believe trademark. And the fun still operating here. It really is. Just all these people just out here supporting me. It really is tremendous. I never would have thought that I would be able to touch this many people in my entire life. And I have a whole nation behind me. How can I get upset? I got to keep on fighting every day to get back on my feet. Well, everyone that it's around you, and Coach Ciano mentions it as well about the attitude, the positive attitude you had. Football loose. And West Virginia has recovered. A Rutgers turnover inside their own 10. That ball got loose and was kicked around. They're still fighting for it, but the officials have signaled West Virginia football. Yeah, it looked to me like Gary Nova never got the ball up into his hands. Looked underneath there under Rutgers center, and it, I don't know if Nova wasn't expecting it at that particular time, or the snap was a little short combination of those two things and the ball goes on the ground that's a huge turnover right there for West Virginia now let's see if the Rutgers defense can hold them out from scoring that's the key sudden change I know that's always a point of emphasis it is sudden change you got to be ready for it now you just get back on the sideline now you got to go back out and play some more defense Julian Miller had the recovery for West Virginia first and goal Mountaineers from the seven yard line of Rutgers Smith hands it off Alston Bounces off the pile, keeps the feet moving inside the five. Pushed back, but forward progress will get him down near the three. 
And Alston getting some extra playing time today because of his size, I think. 5'11", 221 pounds, giving him a little extra push. Quick snap, quick right quick back. Snap, right back, touchdown. Alston into the end zone for a West Virginia touchdown. That quick snap, that can get a defensive lineman if he's not ready. Absolutely. He's trying to come get set up right from the play before. You see them all lined up. They know what they want to do real fast, and you try to get adjusted to it. And you see they didn't get adjusted fast enough, and they scored. Well, second touchdown run of the game for Alston. This one from three yards. He had the 52-yard touchdown run earlier. Alston had not had a run longer than 23 yards on the season prior to that. Middenkirk's point after is good. And it is good. All right, great job by the holder there to he double clutched it but was able to get it. So Austin with the touchdown run. And it has put West Virginia in front 21-17. More with Eric LeGrand when we come back to Piscataway. That was just over a year ago, October 16th of 2010, the injury at the Meadowlands to Eric. His initials and number, part of the Believe Foundation. That is your aunt, I believe, right? That is my aunt. She's actually here today. My whole family's up in the press box ahead of us. And, you know, just enjoy this game out here and see me come out the tunnel. And we saw a shot of you helping out with the Rutgers broadcast crew. You've been doing that for a while now. How have you enjoyed the broadcasting side? I've actually really enjoyed it, you know. This is something I always wanted to do, and since I couldn't go to the NFL right away now, I can start broadcasting, and I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff, you know, just speaking about the game I love. What kind of stuff have you been doing, Eric? I've been working with Rutgers Radio. I've been able to go on SNY and do a few games. Then I've been able to also work with CBS, and now I'm here with you guys on ABC enjoying this. Well, when we chatted with Coach Ciano yesterday, he said the one thing about Eric, is that even when he was finished playing, it was all 24-7 football. Here's the return, sneaking through up near the 35-yard line. Coach Seattle said, you know, sometimes you have guys, they, they play the game well, and then they leave the field, and they don't think much about football. He said, that wasn't Eric. He'd play the game, he'd get off the field, and he'd still talk about football 24-7. It's just, uh, it's just been a part of my life since I was five years old. I love doing it. Just, I just, the passion just going out there, you know, you just get that fire and it was great to come out that tunnel again too. I just felt that like shock that you go out there and play. And I just, just live my life by playing football and being around it and just talking about it. So Rutgers begins at their own 37 yard line. 17, good pass. That is Michael Burton down the sideline, stepping out near the 46 yard line, close to a first down. Just the second catch of the season for Burton to pick up a nine. Eric, another thing Coach Shiano talked about with us was your spirit and the fact that you, even though you're going through this and the things you've gone through, always show up with a smile on your face. Where does that come from? It's just the way I am. I'm always positive. I like to have a good time. And I just like to think about it, like, how can I get myself down when I got there's a whole bunch of people out there that support me behind my back and always somebody in a worse situation than I'm in. I may be in a chair right now, but there's people that don't even have the support. We don't have family support, so I have the whole world behind my back. I can't get down in situations like this. Another carry. This is Jamison. Juan Jamison is across midfield down near the 45-yard line, a gain of seven. The re uh, rehabilitation continues, Eric, and everything we hear going well. In fact, there was some uh, some video on Twitter of you recently. Yeah, in the video, I, I post up a little every now and then, just trying to show everybody what I'm doing. But actually, I'm getting up on this Christopher and Dana Rees Neurological Recovery Network program that's happening within, it's like this treadmill that will retrain my legs how to walk again. And that's going to be within the first week of November. Nova going towards the end zone. The flag flies. Pratt, and he was double covered inside the 10. And the defender never looks back for the football, five. and that's where you get the problem. Pass interference, defense number five, 15 yard penalty, first down. Take a look at it right here. Pratt coming from the right side, working all the way across the field. 
And right there is the pass interference. And that defender just never turns around, never looks back, and makes the contact an easy call for the official. That's Pat Miller who was called for the penalty. So that's when you see when the, when the offense is going, knows where the ball is coming. The defender has no idea in this kind of weather. He just runs right into him. Sanu in motion to the left side of the formation. Hand off. Nothing there that time for Jamison. Eric, you were mentioning a, a moment ago about the Christopher Reeve rehabilitation. And that is you right there. The Christopher Reeve Neurological Recovery Treadmill. This is at the Kessler Rehabilitation Center in Ocean Township. And that was just a week or two ago? That was actually a few weeks back. I was just testing it out, seeing how if I was going to be able to maintain it, be able to go like without getting that my blood pressure dropping. And then basically my body adjusted to it. And now I'm going to join the five-day program on it, and I'm excited for it. That's the next step in my progression. Intended for Sanu, ball may have been tipped and incomplete. Go what down. did the doctors tell you as far as uh, recovery and what can you expect? They, they don't know what you can expect from it because with this injury, there's no cure out there yet. And they, everyone's different. They don't know. But they say that being able to get to this this far for where my level of injury is, is really amazing. It's a true blessing. And just getting up on that treadmill is huge. Because you don't see too many people with my level of injury up on that treadmill. And I'm excited to be up on there and hopefully get some neurological function throughout the bodies anywhere. That would be great. What was that like to actually be doing a physical activity again? Would that mean what that mean yeah. to you? The lie, I felt actually I felt kind of goofy running walking like that. Because you know that somebody else walking me, but <laughs> hey, gotta get used to it. Pratt, the intended receiver, incomplete down near the goal line. Watch Nova in the pocket here. He's actually has the benefit of a uh, plowed area of the field to get his feet right. And it's like his receiver could have reacted and moved better to Pratt could have adjusted to the ball a little better there. So it's fourth down, fourth and ten. And the ball is at the 30-yard line. San Santee not coming on to attempt. Now that's what would into be a the wide, down. so I don't expect that they would do it. Now they'll call a timeout to discuss. So Rutgers uses their first of their three timeouts. We'll have more with Eric Grant and more from Piscataway when we come back. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Lexus. It's time to engineer amazing. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest, most reliable 4G network. And Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Wet snow still falling here in Piscataway. Prior to the game, Eric Legrand led the Scarlet Knights onto the field. Greg Ciano told us yesterday that he said to you a year ago that one day you'll lead the team onto the field. Do you yes. remember that? Yes, I do. I remember you said you will lead us out to the field. I'm thinking this was the perfect time to lead the team out onto the field because these are the players that I played with by, basically for my career here. So even though I'm not walking yet to lead them out, I wanted to lead the team that I grew up with playing here and being able to come out with them. And it was just an emotional scene for them. So a fourth down here for Rutgers from the 30 of West Virginia. Sanu in motion to the left side. Nova's throw, it looked like contact and another flag will come out. Karan Pratt, the intended receiver, but Pat Miller is gonna get his second pass interference call on this Rutgers possession. Pass interference, defense number six, 15 yard penalty, first down. And that's, that's a nice matchup it's looking like for Rutgers here with Pratt on Miller. Second time they've had the penalty there, and that's obvious. Miller just throws the arm around Pratt. Easy call again for the official. Absolutely. I don't know what he had to argue about right there. You can see his back arm was wrapped around him. Jamison in the backfield. Pratt came in motion to the left side. Handoff, finding a seam. Jamison met around the five-yard line. He had a pretty good head of steam going. Or Pat Miller made contact with Ian Smith. 
And they catch him in a blitz. The linebacker, good, gets up into the hole and gets pushed out of the way, creating a seam. Well, oh, that one could have busted out the other end. They picked up nine, so it's second down and one from the five. Jameis in the back. That's Pratt in motion again. Nova, bootlegs. Under heat and underthrows the intended receiver at the two yard line, that being the tight end, D.C. Jefferson. Garrett Scarvin was the one chasing Gary Nova. Gary Nova, like many of these Rutgers kids, went to a New Jersey high school. You did too. You went to high school not very far from here, didn't you? Yeah, I was right down the road, 15 minutes from here. So, you know, Jersey kids staying at home, that's, that's what Coach Yano's trying to get us all to start doing it. He's been doing pretty well with that. Coach Ciano told us a story. He saw you play a game in high school. You scored a touchdown, and you did a. I keep chopping in front of him. You know, that's the, that was a whole situation with Rutgers, you know, keep chopping. And when I got the score, that's all I did was chop in front of him. Well, Burton gets very close to getting the score there, but just a little shy of the goal line. Burton, who had only one carry on the season coming into this game, has had a couple of carries so far today. You know what it's like to play fullback, especially short yardage like this. Oh yeah, fullbacks come in a big role and right now. You know, you just give a little quick dive to them and get into a, a quick score for yeah, them. I, I thought you talked about carrying the ball instead of locking somebody. Ah, you know, fullbacks are like, you know, I would like to get the ball, <laughs> get the touchdown, and, you know, get a little bit of the glory. Right. First and goal, handoff into the end zone, touchdown, Jawan Jamison. A couple of pass interference calls helped along the way, but Rutgers marches down the field, and they answer as this game continues to go back and forth. A nine-play drive. The San San T extra point. That is straight through, 24-21, Rutgers. Here's Eric LeGrand telling us about the touchdown for Jamison. A little offset, fullback to the side, and then got a little hole for the, that the line created. Jerron just fouled his blockers, got right into the end zone, scored the touchdown for the Scarlet Knights. Snow a little lighter, it's still falling. 9.23 left till halftime, 24-21, Rutgers. Leading West Virginia. Tonight, a great lineup of college football. Four of the hottest teams are in action against key opponents. Eric, you got a game there you may lock on to you later tonight? Yeah, I might get into this Clemson Georgia Tech game. Clemson's yes. been impressing me lately. A lot of people have been picking them to lose, like, or it's going to be a close game, so I'm going to watch that game tonight. So, fifth ranked Clemson Georgia Tech. That's at 8 Eastern on ABC and also available on ESPN3. The Hardy fans weathering the conditions here in Piscataway. Takes a special kind of person to want to come out here in this, this type of weather and enjoy a football game. We've had six lead changes after that Jameson one-yard touchdown run. Justin Dorner to kick it away. Glad to have you with us, Mark Dealey with Ray Bentley and Eric LeGrand from High Point Solution Stadium in Piscataway. Brad Starks had an 80-yard kickoff return brought back due to penalty earlier. Ah, time for our AFLAC trivia question, which Ray and I have not seen, nor has Eric, the question when Rutgers last defeated for a 94. Who was the Scarlet Knights starting quarterback? I have the least slightest clue on who the Rutgers quarterback <laughs> was back in 94. I was just four years old at the time, so I had no idea. Well, 16 in a row, won by West Virginia in this series. And Greg Ciano, 0 and 10 against West Virginia. You had a chance to play against the Mountaineers a couple of years ago, was that talked about? The fact that you guys hadn't beaten them in a while? It was actually talked about in the papers a lot. You know, really, I had no idea about not beating them. And at that time, it was about 14 years. So when you read the paper, you're like, really? That 
that's what happened on but but then you just try to go out there and get a win and we had a close game with them came down to the last drive and they got the first down and just took a knee to end it smith to throw underneath Tavon austin tripped up that was jamal morell who has a twin jameel on this team as well for Rutgers. jameel and jamal well, we've, right. had, we've had a few twins here with Jimmy, the McCordy twins who are both in the NFL right now. Third down and seven for West Virginia at their own 39-yard line. They have yet to convert on third down. Smith the hands of Austin a little bit behind him but incomplete and it's fourth down. Rutgers dialed up the blitz here on this one and I, I think that Geno Smith kind of panicked a little bit. He didn't keep his feet set and because of that he leaned back threw off the back foot and that led to the inaccuracy in the pass. Save the punt of Molinari how talented is Mohamed Sinuer? That kid is unbelievably gifted with everything that he's doing out there. He can really do almost everything out there. Catch field, catch punch, catch kickoff returns, catch the ball. He can play quarterback and punt the ball. It's crazy that what, that what a freak athlete he is. Well, there he just got that punt away. So Rutgers takes over. Let's answer the Affleck trivia question. Last time Rutgers Beat West Virginia September 10th, 94. Who was the Knights starting quarterback? And Eric, I do know you know this one. Right? <laughs> Let's see who this one is. Ray Lucas. Ray Lucas. Go. Wow. <laughs> Ray Lucas. Wow. I can't. Wow, that really just went over my head about that. I've actually been working with Ray a lot for the past few weeks. Wow. I'm ashamed of myself right now. <laughs> Fred comes right. in motion to the right. Play fake. Nova. Is in. Yes, he did make the catch there at the 30 yard line, caught by Pratt, who's been a prominent target so far today. Well, seeing the name Ray Lucas makes me think I had heard that individuals, many from the NFL, have been contacting you after your injury. Yes, I've talked to a few NFL players, and they've been reaching out to me. Just They just love the, the way I'm taking my injury and just. Fighting through it. Bart Scott's done a lot for my family with his can't wait shirts. I've had dinner with Justin Tuck before. It's just people just reaching out. It's, it's been really it's a truly really a blessing. Carry for Jamison. Wrapped up by Najee Good. Uh, Coach Rex Ryan uh, visited with you a little bit. They actually met him at a practice this past summer. That's a cool guy, man. He's really down to earth and everything. He is what he shows that he is, yeah. even when he goes on camera. <laughs> yeah. Andy Reid. Right? Sure doesn't. Yeah. Andy Reid. Andy Reid has reached out to me a few times too. I actually just talked to him last week and how they, how he's watching the Louisville game and getting ready for his bye week. But now they got to bounce back for tomorrow playing, playing the Cowboys. Third and six. Rutgers from their 30. Nova started to run left, now goes right. He's going to take it himself, and he has the first down. Stays in bounds. Gets across the 40-yard line. Across the 45, Darwin Cook eventually ushered him out. Gary Nova shows you some pretty good athleticism on this play. It did. I didn't even know he had that in him, running like that. It's great to see yeah. the little freshman quarterback get yeah. his legs. Fear is a powerful thing, I think. Mean. Run for his life. <laughs> Gain of 18. Saw him being chased by Bruce Irvin, among others, for West Virginia. Gets up to the 48 yard line of Rutgers. First down. Jeremy Deering now in the backfield, but Nova under center. Makes the handoff to Deering. Play fake. Out of the hands of Coleman. Brandon Coleman, such a big target, 6'6", 220 pounds. This ball is just a little bit behind Coleman. He's set up, nobody around him, steps right into it. Actually threw it pretty much where he had to because of the trailing coverage there from Cook. No one could have been caught. It's a second and 10 
from Rutgers 48. Nova hands it off to Martinick. Martinick spinning and looks like he has the first down. A gain of 11 for Jersey Joe Martinick. Really just a quick draw play up the middle. Martinick, who's usually the fullback, takes advantage of having someone else be a lead blocker for him and splits the defense. I uh, know it's always good to have someone else doing the dirty work right. for you sometimes you know, <laughs> after doing it all day long. Throw your bone once in a while. Hey, every now and then. It's a new wide right. Jamison okay. running right, but meets a wall of Julian Miller. Jameson brings it down. Let's check in with the studio once again. Here's Robert Flores. Mark, Ray, and Eric. An update between Kansas State and Oklahoma. Landry Jones to Jazz Reynolds and the Sooners back on top. Late in the second half, they're going to try a 52-yard field goal. Georgia has just scored a touchdown. They're down seven to Florida in Jacksonville late second quarter. Robert, thank you. It's a second down and nine for Rutgers at the 40-yard line of West Virginia. Nova, far side, Pratt. Boy, Karad Pratt, the sophomore, having a big day, Tandy. Takes him out of bounds, and Karan Pratt gains 13. And what you're seeing right now, Tandy is playing back so far because he's worried about getting run past. And so you just hitch up in front of him, hitch at the sticks, an easy throw, easy execution of that play. It was Karan right a perfect route with the perfect timing, and guy delivered it. Perfect ball right to him for the first down. And then first down has him at the 27-yard line of West Virginia. Rutgers leading by three inside five minutes to go till halftime. A lot of time. Nova looked like he was looking for the tight end D.C. Jefferson but overshoots him at the 10. Eric, with your work on the Rutgers radio, do you have commentary towards the players? Is it difficult to comment on guys who were your former teammates? It's not actually really difficult. There's actually no the player who that person is so it's actually kind of easy for me because I know the personality I know how, how they are their work ethic so really easy to comment on them for myself have you had to criticize them at all I had to criticize them a little here and there you know constructive right. <laughs> it's always constructive if you take it that way <laughs> Jameson straight ahead still pushing that pile rugby scrum there Doug Rigg, the first to get to him from West Virginia. Much like playing for Coach Ciano. He's a very determined man, and he believes he can will things to happen. And he's very intense when he's out there on that practice field. And you just want to go out there and you want to win for him. Because just the way that he treats you as a person, too, is really is truly amazing how he cares about his program and the players around him. Third down and four. Four of eight on third down today. Nova steps up. Running again, but looks like he's going to be a little bit shy. About a yard short of the first down with the spot. Great decision by Nova to pull that down and run with it. He's looking to get the fullback in the flat. And now Coach Giano's got a decision to make here. Eric, what would your decision be? You going to go for this? I will go for it. I'm not going to lie. I will <laughs> go for it. we got the crowd behind your back. The momentum's going. Got to go for it. I'm with you all the way on that one. Of course, I have never not wanted to go for it. <laughs> I don't like to kick the ball under any circumstances. It's like he's going to use a timeout when he gets the clock down, which he does. So Rutgers, one timeout remaining. We'll be back with more with Eric Legrand. Rutgers on the move. Just under three minutes to go till halftime. Rutgers leading 25th ranked West Virginia 24-21. Mark Neely with Eric Legrand, Ray Bentley. And you say go for it here on fourth and one. I'm doing the same go for it. It's fourth and inches. I believe you could get this for fourth down. 
and then you can try to get a touchdown by the end of the half, I think you have a huge momentum for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights going into halftime. So what Coming play? Uh, what play you call? Yeah. Fullback dive. Looking <laughs> <laughs> like a great uh, fullback. Second time you called that up. <laughs> oh, that's good. Coach Actually, a, that'd be a great call. Quick hitter. They're set up with a fullback in this formation. This drive started at the Rutgers 26. This will be the 11th play of the drive. It's fourth and one. And now West Virginia. Nope. Timeout. Rutgers. Rutgers is a second timeout. So we'll step aside as well. Fourth and one coming up when we return to Piscataway. these numbers. Whoa! Great job! I told you so! See what happens when you work hard? Twenty-four twenty-one Rutgers, 259 to play. Yeah, Rutgers burned two quick timeouts there. Kind of like basketball, you look out and see the yeah, defense. Yeah, I think that's then, what it was, probably. Yeah, probably saw something that he didn't like, so he had to, maybe wanted to change the call up a little bit. Brad in motion to the right. Rutgers going for it on fourth and one, and they get the first down and more. Jamison down the sideline. Touchdown! Well, Pratt came in motion to that right side, and he put a great block on to help free him for an 18-yard touchdown run. Yeah, he just rode Tandy right to the back of the end zone. Good eyes, good vision by Jamison, seeing that it was open outside. Pop that thing out to the edge. Perfectly executed play. The line sealed off the edge for the defense, and Jawan was able to get a little bit outside and score the touchdown for them. Second touchdown of the game for Jawan Jamison. One after for San Santin. It is through. 31 21 Rutgers. And the, the block on the edge there by Paul Carrizola was the one that really busted it. He hooked that outside linebacker. He did hook him, and that's what you needed to do. The linebacker was trying to get outside to, to set that edge, but Paul did, put a perfect block on him and sealed it off, and Joan was able to scoot onto the outside. And the Rutgers offense, four touchdowns now in their last five possessions. He must be the good luck charm. I, it's great to see the team going out there performing versus West Virginia, trying to take this win now. It's now making 17 years of a losing oh, streak. I tell you. Well, I know you have other work to do. You have uh, radio work on the Rutgers side, so we'll let you go. It's terrific to have you here, Eric. Continued hey. success through your rehab, and we look forward to seeing you again. I really appreciate you guys having me here today. It was great. It was our pleasure, Eric. You're an inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Two fifty-three to go till halftime. Now a ten-point lead for the Scarlet Knights. Justin Dorner trying to find a shoveled spot. He can kick this off. Von Brown, number four, back at the five-yard line for West Virginia. It starts on the 15. Slung out of bounds. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. It's been a back and forth game, even though Rutgers have scored four TDs on their last five possessions. West Virginia, Ray, getting it done on the ground today. Yeah, and they, they've had to because it's so difficult to get the, you know, the, the passing game going in this kind of weather. 
your receivers can't make the normal quick cuts that they're accustomed to make in this offense. So I think they've been forced to go by the ground. So it's yeah, Geno Smith and the Mountaineers respond with 2.45 to go till halftime. No light, snow falling. Smith comes to the near side. Ivan McCartney makes the catch from a knee down at the 40. Geno Smith saw man-to-man, -man, one on one coverage on the back side and just took quick advantage of it. That gained four, second down and six. Morrell looking like he's coming on the blitz. Morrell number 37, here he comes, he's picked up. Alston gets across the line. Looks like, well, we'll see with forward progress and where they spot it. He'll have the first down. He gains six. But there is a West Virginia player slow in getting up, and he does get to his feet. That being the center, Joe Matson, three-year starter at center for the Mountaineers. Looks like Matson able to just shake it off, get right back. That's right. To hike the football. It is a first down. At the Mountaineers, 47. Urban in motion. Make the handoff to Austin, rolling right. He has a man open, Austin with a catch inside the 40, down near the 38-yard line. First down, Mountaineers. Really nice throw by Geno Smith. You're going to see him fake and then roll to his right. He's looking back for the crosser underneath, and he led his receiver perfectly through it right between a couple of defenders. Started at their own 26, quickly up to the 38 of Rutgers. Quick pass, Starks breaks a tackle, but then taken down by David Rowe. That goes for seven yards. Bushed. <laughs> it's a very good way of putting it, <laughs> and an accurate one. I mean, he's like, wow, what am I gonna, what can I do here? He had to go off the field. Second down and three from the 31 of the Knights. Rutgers had been playing off, came up and pressed a little bit on this play. Smith, complete. That's Urban, Tyler Urban. A pickup of 16 and a first down. Boy, and it almost looked like Harmon had a chance to intercept this ball. He just couldn't get any traction to make the cut, but he was in position. But by the time he got the traction, the ball had arrived. 40 seconds and counting to go in this first half. Mountaineers do have two timeouts remaining. First down from the 15, and with those two timeouts in their back pocket, Alston with the carry, but pushed back by Justin Francis. He loses a yard or two. And West Virginia will use one of their two timeouts. Well, number 20, Sean Alston, has figured prominently in this West Virginia running game today, Ray. Well, some backs are mudders, and I know there's no mud just being field turf, but the essence of it is, is when you have slippery field, uh, slippery field conditions, some guys go better than others, and obviously Alston is one that can go in this kind of thing. Five carries for 65 yards and two TDs for Alston. President Barack Obama has declared October National Disability Employment Awareness Month, stressing the need to utilize the talents of all Americans. And our thanks to Eric Legrand coming in with us during this second quarter. Great to hear not only his commentary, but just his, 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 his disposition. So, so positive. Yeah. I can't tell you I would react that way, to be honest with you. He's an inspiration, no question about it. The mental toughness that he possesses, it shows you why he was an excellent football player before that tragic accident. Second down and 11. That is at the 16 of Rutgers. 23 seconds left till halftime. Rutgers with a 10 point lead. Handoff running right. Andrew Bowie 
And the Rutgers defense had that one all sniffed out. That's a loss of two. Yeah, they actually were blitzing the corner on the backside and pressing everybody else, but they had enough men in the box that when you run laterally, they can come get you. Well, they had to respot the ball in the timeout with one second left. And Hogerson not happy with the officials and the way they're running the play clock right now. Well, they had the ball spotted and picked it up and respotted it. Meanwhile, the game clock was winding down, and West Virginia barely got the timeout called their last with one second left till halftime. So the ball's at the 19. Coach Hogerson's not, not buying that explanation. And although I'll tell you, it, here's the end of that last play. And let's see where they, they set this thing. Looks like it should have been at the 19. Meanwhile, that clock running down. But they were setting up three or four yards in front of that. Well, they brought on Tyler Bittenkirk. I don't know why they ran the ball for one and number two. Why'd they wait for their timeout? Doesn't make any sense. 36-yard attempt out of the hole of Michael Molinari. And the half will end. Molinari couldn't get the hold down for Bittenkirk. And that's and a good snap, too. It almost looked like he tried to fake it. Well, here's the snap from Cody Nutter, who's the long snapper. The snap was fine. But he didn't handle the snap well. And you see how he just kind of banged it on the ground and then picked it up and went? I just think he didn't feel like the uh, timing would be uh, good enough for him to just put it on the ground. And, you know, it's, his kicker's timing was all messed up, so he just picked it up. Scott Van Pelt and Jesse Palmer waiting on the other side. 31-21 Rutgers and State.